Gurugandan teaching, he was nominated seven times to the CJ's type of award. And uh, what I like very much about it is that he's going to tell us about sequence of money. No, no, actually, science of money. Science. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the subject says uh, it's kind of interesting. And I think uh, this is a talk with the most amount of attendance in a Delta building program. So I think everybody is interested in learning about sequence of money. Thank you. Okay. Well, first of all, <coughs> thank you, Dean Kim, for making these arrangements uh, and having this colloquium series. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for everyone to get inspired about learning and education. So um, thank you for inviting me, letting me give this presentation. Little background, I gave a presentation in September 2008 to the scholarly lecture series uh, that the provost had set up. <laughs> And I remember in the talk saying that, uh, putting up little graphs on the screen, I said, I hope I'm wrong, but the market is due for a big downswing. <laughs> and what happened after that point, uh, that was on a Thursday. Friday, the market went up. Monday, the Dow lost 800 points. And uh, people were calling their 401k a 201k. <laughs> and, uh, so Gary calls it, right? <laughs> no, I had just predicted it. Um, and so I, I was called Dr. Doom for a couple months, you know, because of gloom and doom. And so I look forward to doing a presentation here today, and I don't have anything earth-shattering there, but I will show you a lot of things that, that I've learned over the years. So the title of the talk is The Science of Money, and the subtitle <coughs> is, Is It Possible to Predict for Time? the stock market. And before I do that, I've got some good news and bad news. All right, good news, bad news. Let me show you the good news. Uh, a little bit about the demographics here today. There are students, graduate students here from uh, computer science. I've also invited former financial data mining students here. And I see a couple of them, and I thank them all for coming here today. Of course, the uh, faculty are invited, administrators are invited, I invited the finance department. So the good news, first of all, is focused on the graduate students. If you're a master's level student, you can expect to earn over $400,000 more, as opposed to having a bachelor's, over your lifetime. <laughs> Hello, Galleria. Yeah. So, now for the bad news. Approximately 62% of Americans have less than $1,000 in their savings account. And 21% 21, 21 don't even have a savings account. So the idea is that if you're going to have all this money, I'm going to be talking about how to have your money work for you, but if you don't save any, you're going to have a problem. Now for faculty and administrators, I've got another slide, just FYI, might even be considered bad news. <laughs> How much money do you need to retire? If you take your age, multiply it by 10,000. So let's say you're 55 years old times 10,000, you'd need 550,000 per person. Okay. <coughs> by the way, I see several of you taking photos, which is fine. I am recording this because several people had asked they couldn't come, could you record it? So I will be posting this on YouTube. Send me an email and I'll send you the link whenever it's ready. So that's the good news and that's the bad news. So is it possible to predict the stock market, time the market? I will be spending the rest of this morning, afternoon, I'll give three different types of responses to this question. First one, quickest one, no. <laughs> you cannot time the market. And what I find sometimes, people tell me, oh, you can't even time it. They don't even take the time to see whether or not it's possible. From a scientific perspective, you, kind of, you need to go in with an open mind, explore it before coming to a conclusion. Sometimes the conclusion's already reached, and uh, you know, they decide that it's not possible. 
Let me talk about the second response. I am not sure. Let me see whether it is possible. And I call that the general response. And in this particular case, well, OK. In this particular case, in terms of timing the market, what that means in this context is to apply mathematical formulas, which are known as technical indicators, to make buy and sell decisions. Now, I've had some conversations earlier. Some people are fundamentals. They don't look at this type of stuff. <coughs> well, <coughs> let me give you a little background information. Here, we see the price of Yahoo fin from Yahoo Finance of Google. And prices go along the y-axis. Time is going along the x-axis there. And the blue line is the price of Google. The red line is what's called a 50-period simple moving average. Just a little background, because I don't want to make too many assumptions. Here's an example of a three-period moving average. I take three numbers, add it up, and then I take the next three numbers and add up. So the moving average for a three-period takes three numbers, add them up, that's the average. Three periods, add them up, and average. In this case, I'm doing 50 periods, adding them up, take the average of the close. And so, <clears throat> in this particular case, if the price goes above, that's we might buy at 611. And if the price crosses below, we would sell at 711. You make $100 per how many you buy. And this is an example of a long trade. When people think about trading, they usually think about these long trades. So you buy to enter, exit to sell. <clears throat> A short trade, this is kind of counterintuitive, but the idea is you can make money when the market goes up. You can make money when the market goes down. A short trade example is, we, this is a marathon oil. Hopefully you don't know oil stocks. It take a beat. <laughs> this is marathon oil. You sell at 40. You buy at 28, so you make $12. And it's counterintuitive. It's like, how can I sell something I don't own? Okay, it's like I'm selling the Delta building for a million dollars. Anybody? No. Okay. So you sell and then you buy. You basically want it to go down. And you do maybe another sell and buy, make another $12. So even though it went down, you made $24 profit in this little example. So sure, you sell to enter, you buy to exit. Well, let me talk about uh, technical indicators here. And first of all, there's over 400 that I'm aware of. There's probably a lot more. And some examples of technical indicators include the simple moving average, the exponential moving average, weighted moving average, MACD, RSI, stochastics, Bollinger Bands, rate of change, point and figure. So there's, those are the more common ones. There's about 400 of those. <laughs> For a given indicator, like a simple moving average, there's a lot of parameter settings. And it could be like 3 to 200. And for an MACD, there's three parameters. The default is 12, 26, and 9. In this particular case, you might range it from 8 to 22, 18 to 48, 5 to 25. So there's a difference of 20, 30, 20, 20, 30, 20 times each other, 1,200 permutations. That's for just that indicator. So, as you can imagine, with all these indicators and all these permutations, I would say, conservatively, we're talking about one terabyte of one trillion permutations for a buy and one trillion permutations for a sell. Now, that ignores things like what market you're looking at, money management, stop limits, things like that. So the idea is the search space is huge. There are a lot of different permutations. Well, how do you go about timing the market? You get historical financial data, like, for example, Yahoo Finance, the end-of-day data you can get there for any stock. Or you can get intraday data, and there are companies that sell intraday data at reasonable price. You either create or acquire tools to build these technical indicators. And then you come up with mathematical patterns. 
And I use uh, personally and in the classes, uh, financial data mining, <laughs> machine learners such as genetic algorithms, neural networks, and particle swarm optimization, just to name a few. And I'll show you a couple examples with the genetic algorithm a little bit later. Then you backtest, and backtest means you apply the patterns to historical data to make sure, you know, that you've got something valid. And then you test with what's called a paper account. <clears throat> and a paper account, the idea of a paper account is you're making money, but it could be, it's fake money, it's not real money. You lose money, it's fake money, okay? Um, and the next step, which I didn't show, is you eventually move to real money trading this. Okay? <laughs> and so if you are going to move to real money, you want to make sure that your model is very credible. Okay? Any questions, by the way? Just interrupt me if you have any questions. <clears throat> well, let me show you an anatomy of a trade, and then you'll see why I'm talking about this in a moment. Here's a screenshot from uh, Interactive Brokers <coughs> showing Apple Computer, and you see a bit of a hundred and ask of a hundred dollars and one cent. So some people are trying to buy it at a hundred, some are trying to sell it at a hundred and one cent. And uh, if I put an order and it looks something like this, it says I'm trying to buy it at a hundred, and uh, this means I'm trying to buy a hundred shares at a hundred. You see the word stop there? That's called a stop limit. So <clears throat> I'm trying to buy 100 shares at 100. If the order gets placed, it puts a stop limit in. So if I have $100, I'm hoping it goes up. But if it goes down, how much pain am I going to tolerate? If you remember Enron, that went from $30 like down to one cent, okay? We don't want to get in that situation. So we put in a lower limit that says, that's how much financial pain I can tolerate, 95. Stops are very important, okay? Uh, Catherine? Hi, I've got a question. Um, about the stop limit, if I, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing the buy and the sell, is this assuming that you own both of these stock, that you own the stock already, so you have the option of selling it, or are we discussing the... No. Uh, the I, if I hit the transmit button, okay, mm -hmm. and the order is filled at 100, that means I own 100 shares at $100, and then it puts a limit at 95. And that means if the price drops down to 95... It oh, order, it automatically sells it at yeah. 95. Exactly. Uh, okay, okay, I got it. In other words, I'll, I'll buy it at 100, but if it starts to go down right away, I, I, I check out at 95. Yes. Got right. it. Thank you. Otherwise, you're keeping it, right? You're not <laughs> trading it. <laughs> you keep going and you keep it. Right. If it doesn't go down, in other If words. it doesn't go down, then at some point I want to decide to sell. Okay. Here, here's something. Let's say you had $100,000. This is why stops are important. If your 100000 went down to 10000 you lost how much money? 90%, right? To get back to 100K, you have to make how much? 1,000. 1,000. Yeah, 1,000%. A a so that's why it's very important to have stops because you want to live for another day and have some preserve your capital. <laughs> But well, let me come back to here. 